What's up everyone? Today I'm going to go over the movies I watched over the course of the last week. I watched some interesting kind of movies, um, so I wanted to go over them and talk about them. So without further ado, let's get into it. Real quick, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. Tell me what you watched this week. Any interesting movies, any movies you really liked or didn't like. Um, anyway, let's get into the video. This was an interesting week for me. I watched a lot of weird, different types of movies. So let's start off on Monday last week. I watched Bad Trip. I don't have a physical copy because it just came out on Netflix. Um, it's kind of like a if you know if you're familiar with like Bad Grandpa, Jackass, that kind of stuff. It's it's similar to that where they're kind of doing like pranks on real people. And overall, I really like this movie. I thought it was hilarious. Eric Andre, who's the kind of the, the lead guy in this movie. Um, he does a great job at just like pulling off these pranks and the pranks in this movie for me are hilarious um i grew up watching movies like this like i probably shouldn't know but i did grow up watching the jackass movies and i've always enjoyed them um and bad grandpa is always funny so i just really like movies like this the comedy is really funny like if you're familiar with like prank videos on youtube it, they're kind of similar to those it's just it's really funny what they try to do with these with with these pranks and stuff and there's like a plot in there as well and overall i just thought it was a pleasant surprise for 2021 not a movie i was expecting to like and i just really had fun with it and it was just a really good movie if you want to hear me talk more about it uh, check out my check out my review for it it's spoiler free so if you haven't seen the movie you can still watch the video um, but anyway let's get into the what i watch next so on tuesday i watched a really weird movie that's going to be the invasion this is like a alien horror zombie movie with daniel craig and nicole kidman in the lead uh, this is a really weird movie. It's based off like the Body Snatchers, like it's like another uh, rendition of it, I guess. Um, so like she, Nicole Kidman, there's like this like virus going around, and like people are like act, are like this virus is, like make, making people like obey someone or something. They're like they're all like acting in line, and anyone who doesn't gets like attacked, I guess something like that. I'm I'm, I'm describing it terribly. But that's really the plot of the movie. And then Nicole Kidman is trying to like survive. Daniel Craig's her boyfriend, I think. Um, so it was just a really weird movie. I owned it. I bought it at a grocery store for like five bucks back around Halloween. They had like this horror movie section, uh, this little like horror movie shelf of, at a, at the grocery at the my local grocery store. So I I bought this movie just because like why not? You know, it's got Nicole Kidman, and Daniel Craig, and you know, they're good actors. But I just I, re I really didn't like this movie it was really forgettable like i'm having a hard time remember exactly what happened even though i only watched it like less than a week ago because it just wasn't that good and it just wasn't intriguing at all um it's just really a weird movie i mean i thought the second half of the movie got significantly worse i'm not going to spoil it but i didn't really like the second half of the movie and this weird weird like chemistry between nicole kidman and daniel craig i'm, I'm going on way too long about this movie but anyway that's the invasion i didn't really like it um, I don't necessarily recommend you check it out. All right, then on Wednesday, another one I don't have a physical copy for is going to be Godzilla vs. Kong. Obviously, that come out get, came out this week, so I watched it when it came out on Wednesday night. I don't want to talk too much more about Godzilla vs. Kong. I've covered it twice on my channel now. I wasn't crazy about it. I guess that's kind of an unpopular opinion, as, as I've started to see. Uh, most people did really like it, which I don't guess i guess i guess i'm in the minority with that that i didn't really enjoy it i thought it was one of the weaker of the monsterverse movies for me king of the monsters and godzilla vs kong would be like almost tied for the weakest of the franchise like while the monster fights are great i just really didn't get on board with the plot and i thought that that personally for me that dragged down the movie but like i said i've covered godzilla uh, way too much on my channel so if you want to see um, Godzilla vs. Kong review, definitely go check that out on my channel, uh, as well as I did rank all four of the MonsterVerse movies. But anyways, then on Thursday, I watched uh, The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise, directed by Edward Zwick. Uh, recently, I just been feel I'd been feeling like re-watching this one, because um, I, I love movies like this. If you're familiar with like Avatar and Dances with Wolves, um, it's similar to that, and like kind of this like dying culture, and some someone goes there and like experiences it and then joins them. That's the plot. A very simple Tom Cruise, who's like a soldier in the U.S. He goes to Japan. He joins the samurai, and he just gets to experience their culture. And overall, this is a really I think this is a really well-made movie with a great score by Hans Zimmer. Uh, Edward Zwick is I think this movie just looks really good. The action's really good. The acting is good. There's definitely some struggles in there, like the romance, uh, as you can see on the back right there. Um, the romance in the movie feels a little tacked on. Um, if you've seen Legend of the Fall, also directed by Edward Zwick, it feels similar to that with the romance. Like in Legend of the Fall, Edward Zwick's constantly like pushing these romances with Brad Pitt, um, Tristan, Brad Pitt's character. Uh, he's constantly like, doing these romances, 
and it just it feels like not necessary. Same, same case in this one, just tacked on romance. Um, I thought the movie at the end had some mixed messages with like nationalism and imperialism and stuff like that. And you know, was that a good thing, right? Um, but I don't, I don't want to get too into like the history, historical context of the movie. Um, o- overall, it was just really good movie with um, just a, a good like American samurai movie. Overall, I, had, I recommend you check this one out if you haven't seen it. I like movies with swords and stuff. That's like my favorite style of movie. Anything with like a sword and not with guns. Well, this one does have guns, but it's like swords versus guns, which is really cool. So that that's these are my favorite kind of movies, especially when it's in historical context. So I really have fun with this one. All right, so then I didn't watch the movie Friday. So then on Saturday, I watched uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is like a new Netflix, not new, but in 2020 Netflix movie. I've missed pretty much like all the like big 2020 like Oscar movies. So I'm slowly going back through and rewatching them. I'm not going to go too in depth with this movie, uh, my review of it, my thoughts, because I am going to review it. I'm planning on reviewing like most, most of the Oscar nominated movies as I haven't seen most of them. So I'm going to... Watch them, then review them, like Mank, Nomad Land, Sound of Metal, all, the, all those ones. Um, I'm going to try to watch them and review them, um, including this one. I thought it was just really well made um, and really good. Um, for a movie that's kind of like an Oscar drama, definitely like kind of kind of going for Oscars here. It was surprisingly entertaining and surprisingly funny. Like I, I found the humor in it really good. And I mentioned this in my letterbox review, but like it tackles the issues of racism and hate and discrimination and it tackles all of that while still keeping the movie entertaining and hats off to the director because that's not easy and it, it doesn't feel like it's going overboard with anything it just it feels very constructed and very, very well constructed and I anyway I don't want to go too in depth I will review the movie in depth um so anyway that was Ma Rainey's Black Bottom another one I don't have a physical copy for then on Sunday yesterday um I did I do have a physical copy for this one I watched Mission Impossible 2. My goal for 2021 is to watch through all the Mission Impossible movies. I have not seen any of them. Well, now I've seen the first two. Another Tom Cruise movie. Um, but I overall, I actually, I don't, I don't really know how I feel about this one. It was, it was pretty good, I think. Um, directed by John Woo, who did Face Off. I think the movie was pretty good. Uh, it had, I thought the plot was really generic, very reminiscent of like James Bond movies. Um, it has this like virus plot where they're like trying to where the villains trying to like unleash this disease on or virus on people, and for me that's just a really generic plot where you really have to have something creative for it to not for for it to not feel like you're like beating on other movies that have similar plots. So I didn't really dig the plot here, and overall it just felt really similar. Like they tried to take the Mission Impossible franchise down a James Bond route, but at the same time there's a lot I did like about this movie. Tom Cruise is. Just one of the best action stars of all time. I think that's just a fact at this point. Um, he's so good at it. Um, I, this movie has this like early 2000s feel. Um, and I grew up in the early 2000s. And I watched a lot of movies in the two th- early 2000s. That's kind of my my favorite era of movies. Like 2000 to 2006. 2008 maybe. So I just I love movies in that, that era. It's got like the soundtrack. And it's got all that, all that, all that good stuff from the early 2000s. And then there's like a Metallica song at the end, which is kind of weird. But this also has a score by Hans Zimmer, um, which is kind of weird that he did a Mission Impossible movie. But I'm like obsessed with Hans Zimmer. Uh, he's easily my favorite like composer for a film. Um, but I thought the f- uh, soundtrack, or the, not the, the score, sounded a lot like the Dark Knight score and the Batman Begins score. Um, which is kind of weird. Um, obviously, they're both by Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer has a nice style to him. Where it does sound similar, but I thought it was a lot of the score, a lot of the songs... And the compositions and it did sound like ones from the Dark Knight. So I thought that was interesting. But the best part about the Mission Impossible 2 is the chase scene at the end. Just really good. Like there's this motorcycle scene with Tom Cruise on it and he's doing all his stunts as usual. And um, then there's a fight at the end with him and the villain. Just really good stuff. Uh, if you like action, this movie's final act is just perfect. I love this the final act of this movie. Um, you're able to just put the stupid plot aside and just enjoy the movie. And that's really what I did enjoy about this movie. So overall, for the most part, I liked it. Um, I probably liked it more than the first one a bit more. I just, I thought at times it, the plot was just not good. So that's everything I watched this week. Uh, let me, let me know down below what you watched this week. Um, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Anyways, um, thanks for watching and have a great day.